videos make sure you hit the notification button on this channel to notify you all new videos and also make sure you subscribe to the facebook channel or the facebook page that yes we do have a facebook page called buckles locker i'm back folks i'm at i'm driving right now so i'm at a stop sign or stop light it's my first video while i'm doing driving by the way but I want to touch on a topic that uh, the Bucks uh, family has been talking about for a while. And it's actually been amplified with the most recent events. Um, Jameis Winston has been hit with a three-game suspension over the off-the-field incident involving a Uber driver, a female Uber driver, that happened in 2016. The NFL had took their sweet old time to hand out the suspension. The investigation took eight months and all this other stuff that had happened in between, you know, to pretty much finalize the suspension. So it took a long time for them to uh, suspend Jameis. Um, and I'm going to give you my take on it. It's an up and down take. And by all means, I'm not giving Jameis Winston no excuses. I am not letting him off the hook. He's the quarterback of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. He's the franchise guy. And he must be held accountable for his actions off the field. Over and over and over again, Jameis has been put in this, these type of situations and he has not handled these things very well when these incidents has happened dating back to his Florida State Seminole days. This is well documented. And the media and the Jameis Winston doubters, haters, have been waiting for this to happen. And as you can see, even some of the Bucks family have been coming out and shaming with Jameis about his allegations with the Uber driver, the female Uber driver. And you have been hearing the Mariota stuff come up again against Jameis, the Mariota fans in, in the Bucks family that wanted Mariota versus Jameis. So, I've been watching social media. I've been watching a lot of Bucks, the luck, some of the Bucks um, Facebook pages, and even on social media, I mean, on um, Twitter and Instagram and all stuff like that. They out. The Jameis Winston haters are out, folks. Some people have jumped off the bandwagon. Some of them out here screaming for, oh, we should have drafted Mariota. Thank you, Jason Lige and Dirk Cutter. This is on you and all that. Now, by all means... Jameis needs to be held accountable. He is wrong for what he did. And he tried to cover it up with his um, friends. And one of his, I guess, friends that's in jail right now for uh, raping a, a female at Vanderbilt, a uh, Vanderbilt Commodore ex-football player in college, said that Jameis was by himself when the incident happened. Ronald Darby came out and said, oh, no, nah, it was multiple people in the car and Jameis was not in the front seat. So there is some funny stuff going on with that story. So that whole story sounds fishy. So what Roger Goodell did basically was looked at Jameis and all his incidents dating back to college and just made a, a judgment call and said, you know what, let me just suspend him three games and maybe this will give him a smack on the wrist because that's what it is because Ezekiel Elliott got six, six games. Let's give Jameis three games and let's see if he straightens himself up. He's a 24-year-old man that has a family. He's married, you know, he he needs to grow up. Well, he, he has, he's done some immature things on the field and off the field. And hopefully this is a wake-up call. This is his uh, get your, get your self together wake-up call by Roger Goodell. Because people are coming out and saying the Bucks should cut ties with Jameis. Um, they should not give him, they should not give him an extension contract extension because this is his um, last year and they can pick up his fifth year option which goes up to about $20 million and while they um, do the contract negotiation so there are stories out there that are saying that the Bucks should cut bait with Jameis because of the off the field issues and on the field issues and there's been some questions about his on the field uh, leadership and maturity but it all comes down to Jameis and I'm, I'm very disappointed in Jameis and his and this this story. And I've been following this story for a while. I've just been sitting back in the, in the cut, you know, just waiting for everything to play out. And then it played out like this. Very sad. Um, 
very, very, uh, it's a black, uh, it's a black eye on the Bucks organization. Jameis is very talented. He's a very talented quarterback, very talented NFL football player. But off the field, he got some issues. You know, I don't know if he needs a chaperone with him 24-7. He needs to grow up. Jason, Leish, and the Glazer family and Dirk Cutter need to sit this boy down and tell him, this is your last chance. Because if it was me, I'm going to ride with James because he was the number one pick and he talented. But this is James' last chance. And I got to say that. This is his last chance because if he has any more issues off the field like this, you got to cut bait. You can't keep that around the organization and saying that's acceptable. That's acceptable. Which is not by all means. And yes, they're going to keep him because, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick is not the future of the NFL. And we just, we made all these moves in the offseason to pretty much push to the playoffs. And to cut bait with Jameis right now, we'll pretty much sign and seal Dirk Cutter and Jason Light's jobs. Now, let's, let me say this very clear. Dirk Cutter and Jason Light they are coaching and he Jason well, Dirk is coaching for his job and Jason made these moves to save his job and then with the James Winston situation it gives it even more of a black eye in the front office between Jason and Dirk so this is very this is going to be very 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 closely watched throughout the season even the first three games we're going to see how this team is built and that we got all we got Dirty in the trenches with the D line and O line signings. So, and we drafted Ronald Jones, Rojo. Shouts out to Rojo. And we built up, we built, beefed up our defense on the front, front end, and drafted some young guys on the back end. So, the first three games are very tough. Uh, I believe the first, well, the first game is New Orleans. Then we got Philly, and then we got Pittsburgh. Monday Night Football. We go to New Orleans. I'll be at that game in New Orleans because I live in New Orleans. But the first three games are tough. If we can squeak out one of those games, if we can beat New Orleans in New Orleans, which is going to be tough, or if we can squeak out Philly or Pittsburgh, which is going to be tough, if we can come out that day one and two or two and one, that's good. Then we get Jameis back. Jameis is playing for his job this season. If Jameis have a bad season with these issues, despite what he did for the first couple of years in his career, breaking records, that ain't going to mean jack. That ain't going to mean nothing. Because you're going to have to cut bait. Because why put up with the issues and he's putting up, you know, he's not doing good on the field. His record is under 500 as a starting quarterback. Now, granted, there has been some other issues with the reason being that his record is under 500 with a poor defense, poor coach, and stuff like that. But as a player, you have to be hold yourself responsible for your actions outside of the facility. And Jameis Winston has done a poor job. This has set the team back. Let's be honest. He set the team back with this with the suspension. And there is word out on the street that he's not going to appeal. He's going to take it like a man. Thank you, Jameis, for taking that like a man. But you basically ruined or messed up our offseason with being suspended. Now, as for Ryan Fitzpatrick, what are we going to get? A backup quarterback starting for three games. And this is why you need a backup quarterback. A guy that can pretty much keep the offense afloat and play the same way that you would play with James. Which, that's not true, but you cannot, you don't have to scrap the playbook with Ryan Fitzpatrick. While James Winston is serving his three-game suspension. You can still run the plays design. But the offense will be kind of boxed in a little bit because Ryan Fitzpatrick doesn't have an arm like James. So, um, this is going to be interesting. Um, these first three games are going to be tough without James. Yeah, we had high expectations, and we still do. It remains to be seen what we're going to do in these three games. New Orleans. Philly and Pittsburgh. There's a possibility that we could be 0 and 3 going into week four. And the boot and the and the and the talks are gonna get really, really, really heated when Jameis get back. It's gonna be like Jameis, you gotta bring us back because let's be honest too. If Dirk go under 500, he out of there. 
and probably Jason Leitch as well. So James put people's jobs on the line uh, because of his off-the-field actions. He put the team behind the eight ball. Jameis Winston committed a selfish act by doing this. He's hurt the team this year, and we have high expectations. We hoping to win 9 to 10, 11 games. Maybe surprise the league with 12 games based on our roster moves. Hopefully, Jameis comes back. He learns from this, and he comes back and play like a bat out of hell, like Tom Brady did when he got suspended. But it remains to be seen how James is going to react when he comes back. If he comes back with a vengeance and comes back with a chip on his shoulder, we can go, we can go uh, ten and three. We can go nine and four with James for the thirteen games, or we can go eight and five. If he can, if he can get us to eight and five in those thirteen on, on those thirteen games that he's back, and we can get it one or two of those first three games, we can end the season ten and six. Nine and seven. If we go nine and seven, do you fire Dirk? Do you do you get rid of Jason Light? I don't know, but Jason Light and Dirk they gotta have a big season. Unfortunately, that's the way. That's the best way. That's what it comes down to. But anyway, I just wanted to give you my take on this um, this situation with Jameis. Once again, he's been suspended for three games. The first three games of the 2018-2019 season. Um, this your boy Isaiah coming to you from Bucko's Locker. Uh, subscribe, like, comment, share on all my videos. Make sure you hit the notification button on this channel. Notifying all new videos. I'm back making more videos. I got more videos to make this week. Don't worry, folks. I'm still here. Shouts out to Travis for starting that Facebook page once again. Go to our Facebook page, Buckles Locker Search in the uh, search uh, search bar. Type in Buckles Locker. We are there on Facebook as well. The group is growing. This video will be posted in the group and also on this page, of course. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and like and subscribe to the Facebook page. Fire those cannons. Siege the day. I'm out.